Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Yanti Amos and I'm a wellness industry mentor and I teach yoga and karate globally. I post regular videos about karate, leadership and yoga and I want to thank you for showing up today. Let's get started. We're going to begin by rolling the shoulders back and down and finding a comfortable seat. Whether you're in your Cesar or whether you prefer cross-legged, it's all really up to you. And I invite you to experiment a little with your seat. And you can always reach for a cushion, you know this. Chairs, cushions for support. Or I've got a yoga block here. Sometimes it does feel good to have the, the knees lower than the hips. So let's arrive and shoulders back and down long spine. Relax through the arms and open up through the chest. So as I said, uh, I invite you to do as much of the practice as you need. And I know that uh, some of us are suffering from injuries and sometimes it's, uh, it's just a, a fatigue or a malaise that uh, is inexplicable. Sometimes it is explainable. Whatever it is that uh, you need uh, during the practice, people just arriving. Uh, then you can always uh, adapt and I invite that. So there are always one or two, if not more variations to every posture. So never, never feel you have to do everything. So as I said, morning JT Sensei. <laughs> Long spine. Give yourself a few moments to arrive. And if you notice that your breath is a little uneven, it might be a bit choppy. It may feel that you've got a constriction at your throat or your chest. So it may take some uh, moments for you to settle and ground, and that's perfectly normal. So as you arrive, begin to tap into the breath. You're feeling it through both nostrils, exhaling through both nostrils. Sometimes it also feels good to just sigh out through an open mouth, so whatever feels right to you. And with every successive breath, you'll notice that the neck elongates and the shoulders start to relax downwards. Your hands right now are gonna feel heavy against your knees or your thighs, and you're letting go of any tightness or tension that you may have brought to the mat from holding on to your cell phones or keyboards or whatever it is that uh, that you do in front of your computer so feel like you could release and let go and sigh out what you need to release good relaxing behind the eyes and deep in the center of your head behind your eye sockets and there through your cheeks breathing into your temples the space between your eyebrows your forehead, you feel it through the crown of your head and imagine a long golden thread from between your pelvis rising up in the center of your body and your mind's eye or visualization, the creativity of your mind will help you to imagine a slight lift. Good, so a balance between your structure, your architecture, the asana, we call the stira sukham asana. So it's a uh, sweetness balanced by a structure, balanced by stability, a softness internally. Good, that's your ujjayi. So your ujjayi or your oceanic breathing will be a little audible on the out breath. So let it be as vocalized as you need to make it when you release that tension. Good, just letting it be rhythmic, letting it be nice and fluid and smooth. Let it be continuous, and I will remind you through the practice to breathe more, not less. Good. Let's set our intention, our sankalpa. This is our, perhaps a desire or a plan or a project that you're working towards, or it may be a simple dedication or some affirmation. Maybe it's just three words. In my case, it's I am calm, I am stable. We have three big breaths into it. So, no wrong or right, no particular template here in terms of your intention. Inhale, filling up, and exhale and grounding to settle. Two more, inhale, fill. Exhale, sigh, soften. Good. One more, inhale. 
and exhale relax the face relax the neck and shoulders open up through the chest and send your breath down towards the fingertips good nadi shodhana this is our balancing breath it's equalizing and it's a cleansing breath hand your right hand towards your face and you'll use your ring finger and your right thumb middle finger and your index finger might lightly touch the space between your eyebrows or you can just let it relax it doesn't have to press if that's not comfortable to you. So press the right nostril with the right thumb and you're inhaling nice and smooth. I'll count you one. Good, two. This is three. Close both nostrils out and hold here. Retention of your breath, holding, holding. Release the right thumb, empty out as smoothly as you can. This is two and one. Inhaling through the right. So one, good, two. That's it, three. Holding here, close up both nostrils, close. We close and then we release that ring finger, soften, empty and sigh out. Open your chest, long spine, good, good. And inhale through the left, as smoothly as you can. Good, two and three, close up both, close both. Closing, kumbak retention, let go of that right thumb, soften, empty, as smoothly as you can, two and one. Inhaling, same space, so same nostril, good, two and three, closing. We close, this is a closing, and we release that ring finger, soften, empty out the breath. Now let's try one more cycle on your own, a full cycle, up, down, down, and up and down. So maybe more expansive. You might try to count for um, two, perhaps five or four. So fill up and feel that openness and spaciousness. And that's it. Hold for as long as you can, so perhaps a little longer, then you exhale to sigh and soften through the right. Good, going the other direction, feeling oxygenating through the body. So this simple act of the exchange of the gases will allow the balancing out of your acidity and then increase your pH. You want that alkalinity, that's it. At the end of the day, what we want is the calm, clarity, that reasoned decision-making, that rational mind. Good. Beautiful. And whenever you are ready, you'll release the hand, maybe to the thigh or maybe to the knee. Good. Sitting in stillness, reminding yourself of your intention, your sankalpa, and breathing into it. That's it. And when you're ready, arms up. So you'll scoop it up, reach up, lengthen here, rise up, exhale, palms through the heart, soften. This time we'll press the heels of the hands together a bit lower than your chest. So instead of being right there, uh, just below your collarbones, you're gonna go lower and notice how the armpits start to engage and you'll feel it through the triceps, good. So the heel of the hand and also at the base of the middle finger, feel that press. Two more, inhale, you reach, you lengthen, baby back bend if that feels good. Exhale, bring the prayer a little lower. So now you feel the connection through the uh, lower belly, Uriana Bandha, belly button, and then you'll feel it through the arms connecting through armpits and latissimus. One more, inhale, let's scoop, look up, send your a breath and your intention high. Exhale, a little bit lower, nice. To stretch out. If that's a lot and that's a really intense for you, then just bend the, the fingers and bend and soften through the hands. Look, that's it. Arms out wide. So we'll interlace and we'll allow the shoulders to go back and down. Looking from the side, this is what it is. So shoulders back, send the clasp behind you, exhale, bow, and as you fold, send your energy forward. Doesn't matter where your head is, if it's just uh, more relaxing for you to just release and bow, you can do this, but feel it through the uh, rhomboids and into the scapula. One more, actually two more. So shoulders back and down, puff up your chest, look up, exhale, bow, and draw everything in at the lower belly, at the second under and heart at one point, we call it. It's also a Manipura chakra point, a chakra point for the yogis. So right there, about two inches below the belly button. One more, inhale, take a breath, exhale, stretch it. So as you stretch, relax, feel that length from the armpit through the elbow and there through the wrist and through the knuckles. Good, rise up, face you here. The elbows come into the waistline and my palms are face up. I'm gonna shrug, so as I shrug, the uh, shoulders come up 
and the elbows rise up to help the shoulders lift up exhale wrap around so notice from the side you can see my elbows are wrapping in towards the middle of the back body two more inhale shrug up exhale wrap around and down and my chest is going to dome out a little that's okay let's see if you can uh, manage that by drawing in the bottom ribs couple more so inhale lift up intentionally shrug and then exhale wrap around and down so it's as if you're almost drawing a pencil in towards the back body and you're holding it there with your elbows good one more inhale lifting up and then exhaling wrapping around and down that's it really nice guys and from here interlace the hands i'm going to push the hands away i round out so from the side even though i have a very stiff back I am still um, making a C curve with the upper torso and I reach up high, I push through the fingers, so my arms are long, I'm going to press the back of my head against the insides of my hands, so the palms press. Elbows wide and exhale, bringing the elbows in towards the middle line, they don't have to touch, but that's the general direction, like a clam, so I'm opening up on the breath and then I exhale to round and drop the head, pressing with a little a little pressure as much as is comfortable against the back of the head. Open up again and open elbows wide, wide, as wide as is comfortable to you. And then close out. So elbows in towards the midline, but still draw in and up at the lower belly. Good. So one more little clasp as you push away. So strong through the fingers if you can and strong through elbows and armpits. Stretch it. Good. So from here, I release the hands. I'm coming straight into my tabletop. As I come into tabletop, I'll shift. So I'm shifting it forward, a little back, and make it very uh, organic for you, meaning if your seat is a little tight, then you'll go into a half child's pose perhaps. Or if you want to stretch through the insides of your wrists or arms, then you might even point the fingers towards your knees and back up a little. You can always point the fingers towards the midline, shift a little left and right. You can shift forward, circles perhaps, figure eights, clockwise, counterclockwise. Feel it out. Breathing as you go, remember you're matching uh, every movement with some kind of breath, whether it's an inhale or an exhale. Let's come center and neutral and we'll find our cat cow. So I'm dropping my stomach here. I'm sending the seat behind me. There's a little arch in the lower back. I press strongly through the hands and I'll feel a nice balancing of the shoulders above the wrists. Look up, exhale, you round out. So as you round out a C curve through the entire back, lower, middle, and upper back, draw in and up through the lower belly, just alternate between these two moves. So sending the buttocks behind you, open up, unclench, look up, breathe, open up through the chest, exhale, round and drop your gaze. So you're looking towards your knees or a little higher, feeling the slight suctioning in and up through the lower belly, strong through your arms, and widen a little the uh, fingers. So fingertips start to claw a little, and one or two more. So inhale, looking up, exhale, rounding, using your breath. Good. So always uh, bring it back to the inhales and exhales. If ever you're in doubt and you don't know what's coming next, you can always trust that sitting down to breathe, if you need to just sit and breathe, will always bring, uh, bring you back to a neutral, calm uh, position. So tucking toes under everyone, we are finding our first downward facing dog of the day, pushing through the heels, long arms, and then come forward to your high plank, squeeze the seat. Got so stacking shoulders above your wrists, feeling an engagement uh, through the bottom ribs, and exhale, push it back. Good, inhale, come forward, nice and light and engaged in this way. With the quads drawing away from your knees, you'll feel a lightness, even though this is a uh, seemingly a difficult position. Exhale, push it back. Let's pedal out. So when you pedal out, one leg bends and the other heel lifts and lowers. The pedaling, breathing. Good, and take baby steps to the top of your mat. As you take the baby steps, you'll come to the Uttanasana forward fold at the top of your mat. It's okay to have the knees bent and you can draw in and up through the lower belly so that it doesn't really uh, seem to anybody actually as a passive move. You're engaging internally and a lot is happening there. So take a half lift, look up, exhale, bow and lower, sigh and empty out any tension you need to. Two more, inhale, look up, half lift, exhale, bow down, know that the knees can be bent as much as you need to. Inhale, look up 
and then exhale, bow and lower. The hands come to the mat and you release the left leg behind you. So this is a low kneeling lunge. You can untuck the back uh, foot and the shin presses against the mat, arms up. So if, if this is uh, complicated, you can always do a, a, a modified version and you can always reach for a pillow or you could fold your mat so it becomes a support for the knee. Uh, if you have a spare blanket or a towel, you can always uh, support yourself good. So let's drop the tailbone for now. I often uh, see people lunging forward like this into a very deep, deep lunge. But what we want first is a little drop of the tailbone. So you'll start to feel it through the hip flexors right there. This is what we're looking for, more than this uh, to start with. So awareness there at the tailbone. Good, hands to the heart. Let's take a baby twist. You can just look 45 degrees if you like to start with. So you take it 45 degrees, core in it up, go for the twist, which is a deep initiation at the lower belly before you go. Beautiful, JT. That's it. So twisting, if you're ready for that, good. Left elbow outside of that right thigh and nice and light. Release the hands. We're going to back up and we're actually taking a seat. So if you can, that back uh, hip lightly touches. The, the back heel. Push through the heel and then send energy from your chest towards that shin. So any modification that feels right to you, if the, the bend is not happening, then you can do any variation of that that is comfortable to you. Each one of us is slightly different. Good. From here, I come onto that, the weight in the front foot and I'll step back to a downward facing dog. Pausing for a moment here, then shift forward to your high plank knees to the mat and chest between the hands. Baby cobra here, open through the chest. Good, any variation is also welcome. Notice how my legs are wide here, I have a tight back. So the legs are not gonna to be touching nor are they going to be uh, parallel necessarily. Good, I come back to my knees and I push it back, downward facing dog. I hang the head, my arms are long, and I have three big breaths here. So I inhale to fill, I'll exhale, sigh, and soften. You can shake your head out as much as you need to. Good, one more, inhale, fill, and exhale, sigh. Pushing through the heels or experimenting with your weight distribution through uh, the balls of the feet. Stepping forward with the left foot. So take your time as you come into this low lunge here. Release the back knee, the back shin, and arms come up, lower to the chest. We're going to twist it. So right elbow outside of that left thigh. Maybe you're just looking 45 because that's the way you want to begin. Initiating always, even if it's 45 degrees, initiating from deep in the tendon. So deep behind the belly button if you can. Good, if you're going for the twist, beautiful. Go for the twist, nice. Releasing the hands, let's back up. So as you back up, take the seat. So a little bit different from our half uh, splits we did uh, last time. And again, your chest doesn't have to touch the front leg, but it's just energy towards that leg, good. Soften through the brows if you notice that your tendency is to tighten the jaw when you're maybe feeling a little stiffness or you're feeling a little tight and you don't know what's coming next. We, we bring it to the face and to the shoulders and the neck, good. Now, let's step onto that front leg. We're going to find a forward fold at the top of the mat. So take your time. You tuck the toes and it's a light step. Inhale, look up, flat back. Exhale, which it wants to say like, <laughs> bow down. Arms straight up. So as you reach up, look up, and then hands release to the heart and then relax by the side of the body. Go straight into the second side, reach up. Exhale and let it go. Inhale, half lift and release the hands to the mat. Now it's the right leg. So as we release the right leg, arms come up just for a moment. Hands to the heart, little twist. 45 degrees or a deep twist, front knee over the front ankle. Check it out, feel it out. Doesn't have to be super, super strict as we do the, the warm up. So remember we're going uh, for our variations. Good, release the hands, don't forget to breathe. Sit it back. As you sit it back, find your seat a little position of the heel on your uh, right hip now, or buttocks, and bow it. So you notice now we can go a tiny bit deeper and the natural bowing and the forward folding is somewhat more open. Good, let's step into the left foot, plant your hands, step back, pause here, 
and we sigh out any tension we need to release. Come forward to your high plank. Lower the knees to the mat, the chest between the hands, then glide forward, baby cobra, wrap the shoulders behind you. So instead of the shoulders lifting, we want quite the opposite. So try to isolate and engage a little. Lower down, tuck the toes, come to your knees, push it back, downward facing. Three big breaths, relax the face, sigh out, make as much noise on the out breath as you need to. That's it, inhale, fill. Exhale, imagine the out breath cascading down the backs of your legs. One more. Inhale, stretch through the fingers. Exhale, let it go. And we'll step lightly to the top of the mat. So as you step, maybe my right hand will help the right foot. It might take a little uh, uh, step, step. Doesn't matter, it's not one in one fell swoop. Untuck the back knee, back shin, arms up. So as you look up, Feel that dropping of the tailbone first, and then the stretch, you'll feel it through the front of the hips. This is what we want. Hands to the heart, little twist. Let's take it to the twist or a little 45 degrees, you choose. But drawing in and up through the lower belly, you see and you feel that the initiation is quite central. Imagine the center of your body rather than a surface feeling like touching the belly button. It's actually three inches deep into the body. So. As you find the twist, ease into it. Good. We'll release the hands and back up. Last little bit here. Any degree. Remember, you've, you've got your cushions and you've got bolsters and whatever else you need to support to prop you up if this position is not comfortable. So that's it. And push through the heel. Maybe if the toe uh, or the, the underside of the leg is not happy, you can bend the leg. So know that you don't have to have a full, full expression of this posture. Ease off if you need to. Good. And pressing into the front foot, we'll step lightly to the top of the mat. So use your core as you do land. Inhale for a half lift. Exhale, bow. And then arms up, straight up. As you reach up high, this is your upward salute. Good. Hands to the heart. And then arms relaxed by the side of the body. Here I'm just going to find my uh, son Kalpa, my dedication or my intention and I'll breathe into it as I remind myself what it is I set for myself. Good and down. Come to Utkatasana, our awkward chair. So as you find Utkatasana, remember from the side it's like a, a dropping of the tailbone, quads are going to work. Your heels take a lot of the weight. As, as I lift up my toes, do you notice how I can take a little bit more weight into the back part of the feet. Nice. So, and so coming to the heart, take an inhale, open chest, exhale again. If you want to go for the full twist, remember the lower belly drawing in and up and it'll protect your lower lumbar as you do that. If you're happy to go 45, you go 45. That's it, Laura, really nice. So knees together, think about AD adductors, inner thighs working hard, they're drawing in towards the midline. But as you twist, Good, this is it. Very nice, Gail, you got it. So nice, so any degree of that twist, maybe the elbows, the left elbow is touching the outside. Beautiful, JT Sensei, you got it, nice. Good, come back to center for a moment. So, I'm coming into a little step. So we call this the curtsy, the uh, spiritual curtsy, but it's also, as you might remember, if you're working kibidach, it's the twist we do in hang on. So it's a twist, rota ike, and then coming underneath the chin. So think about this, this being a twist. This is what we're going for. So that's the feeling from Utkatasana. We'll do it together. Inhale, lift the left heel, step behind you, engage here. Think about uh, your hand godan move, which was from Kibidat and this is the rotation, the spiraling, the corkscrew feeling of the twist rotation. So use the back ball of the foot. This is your left foot. You rotate. That's the feeling. Think about any application, and I'm thinking in particular of Hei and Godan. So that's the feeling. If you were to do it in a very pedestrian way, all you would do is from your kibach is you would just make a 45 degree turn. But if you want the power strength and the lightness and that impact, 
it has to be a rotation. So think about that as you come to your curtsy, drawing it up, this should generate a little bit of heat and then twist it. So anything you like with the hands from here, integrating a few of the principles of the yoga with the idea and the intentionality of what you do in your kata. So twist it. Nice. That's it. Good. So think about that front leg is working hard. You'll feel it in the quads, but you also feel it in the inner thighs. So you also feel it through the right hip here. I'm turning, by the way, to my right. And so I'm as in the kata. Good. And come back. Utkatasana. Take a breath. As you sit it down, arms up, going the other way. So lifting up. Good. Let's twist it and then we'll do the twist, the, uh, the prayer. So as you twist it, that's the feeling. Instead of turning 45 degrees and doing a cutter like this, then you go for the jump. You are rotating right ribs this time towards the left. So you feel that corkscrew action and you should feel it through the hips. You should feel it through the lower, lower belly. So. Use both the front leg and the back leg in tandem as you corkscrew it. You should feel the heat being generated. Good. Nice, nice. And back. Let's do the twist to the left. We haven't done that yet. Open chest. Exhale, right elbow outside the left thigh, even off through the hips. Now, in this position, if you prefer, you can always go 45. And then you'll go deeper because you've built up the internal uh, warmth and openness. Good. That's it. So nice. And then back to center. Shoulders back and down. Nice. So here we're finding the activation through the armpits and through the back body core and up. And then come high the balls of your feet into your diver's pose. Good. So I, my tendency will be to lift my shoulders towards my ears. If I can, I'm going to wrap around and bring that awareness to the rhomboids and the shoulder blades. So wrap them down. And there's never a point in our karate where we don't uh, use that principle. We never have our shoulders up towards our ears. This is where we have to habituate and cultivate that consciousness towards the center. And it's uh, absolutely shoulders, scapula, into the back body, into the front tunden area. Lower the hands down. If you're working on a crow, please set up for your crow. Otherwise, you can just find a squat. You know, you can always sit in your squat, malasana, if that's comfortable. Or if you're setting up for crow, I'll guide you through. So hands are going to be a touch wider than shoulders. Strong, strong hands. So press, in other words, you're pressing the mat away. Come onto the balls of your feet. Knees are either at your elbows if you're new to this. If you're comfortable with the knees a little higher, try that out. And so all I'm doing is pressing the mat away, the floor away, and I might lift one foot and then I'll lift the other. And I'm just making with my upper arms a little platform or a little shelf. Beautiful, JT. <laughs> nice. Good. Using breath. That's it. Good. Nice, everyone. Slowly coming back to center. So as you come back to center, open up through the chest, sit it down low. Go separate the feet about hip width distance. And then arms come straight up Exhale, let's bow down, you can bend the legs. So you're reaching for a forward fold. Index finger and thumb showing you from the side. Index finger and thumb are looking for the big toes. Take a half lift and then exhale, bow down. The elbows come wide, hang the head. Two more, inhale. This is a nice awareness at the belly button again. So, so you lower it down and hang. This is where we also want an extension. Sorry, actually this is a, a position of flexion because the body's folding towards itself. But what I'm doing is I'm lengthening out the spine. One more, inhale, half lift here. Bend your knees if you need to. Press a little more through the balls of your feet. Let it go. Good, one more. Inhale, 
And then exhale, tip your weight slightly forward. Play with the balance of your body and your weight distribution. Sometimes our habit is to be very much in your heels. And we were in our heels in Utkatasana, but see if you can spread the toes and feel more confident with the front of your feet too. Let's step onto the hands now. So to any degree, maybe you're touching the middle of your palm, maybe you're going to the wrist creases, feel it out and see where you are comfortable. Feet are still hip width distance. And as you breathe, you look up. It doesn't have to be high. Exhale, lower and fold. Two more, inhale, look up. Exhale, bow and breathe into your seat. And I'd like you to think about the high hamstring attachments into your gluteals. So soften through the buttocks and down the backs of your legs. And empty out, good. You're still in a forward fold, plant your hands, and then step, step. You're in a high plank, push it back, downward facing dog. Good. So right leg lifts, and you'll step it forward. So as you step it forward, reach up high. This is a high crescent lunge. Nice, so high crescent lunge, stay where you are. You would open up, so the left arm comes forward, the right arm behind you. This is a high lunge twist. My front knee comes forward, it wants to get shallow, but I want to drive a little more through that back leg. So twist it, looking to your right. Pause here, relax the right shoulder, it wants to probably lift. But again, using your armpits, draw down. Good. Now come high again, so arms are even. That's it. Now you're gonna step into that front foot and lift the left knee. Right hand on the outside of that left. Uh, I don't know what happened. Someone got lost. Let her in again. Good. That's it. So draw in and up through the belly button and now the left arm behind you. So you're going for another little twist here. Good. Look, look to your left hand if you can. That's it. And gently release the foot. So your left leg behind you Arms up and open, warrior two. So in your warrior two, take your time to settle. No hurry to go from one asana or one pose to the next pose. Straighten the front leg, tip your weight forward. Hinge from your hips and find your triangle pose. So with your triangle pose, the back of your right hand might press against the shin, right shin. And as you rotate, good. So Gail, could you um, mute yourself? and reach up high look up high good that's it stretch it nice nice as you expand we like to think about the arms being points to your star and the energy through the fingertips through the armpits high and low are sending and emanating and exuding your energy and from your hips from your chest and from the crown of your head so feel like you're sending your own uh, special brand of energy out. That's it, while maintaining the nice solidity through both feet. Now, listen carefully, I'm gonna square off my hips. So I keep solid with that right foot, I'm gonna tap the left foot in. I can go as short as I want to, but this is my pyramid pose. So as I find pyramid, I'm sending the energy forward from my chest, and I exhale to lower down over that front leg. So go as short as you need to, go as long as you need to. Both feet are pretty much uh, like railroad tracks. So front foot especially, 12 o'clock with the toes, especially big toes, second toe. And left foot could be a bit 45 degrees to the side. So you could have your hands to the mat or on blocks. You could reach for opposite elbows, sending energy forward from the sternum first and then down and rolling this right hip back. So it's probably gonna to want to come a little forward. So if you can square off and level off, that would be great. Good, stay where you are. You're low and your left, uh, sorry, your right hand is gonna be uh, supporting you on the mat, on the floor. Reach up and forward. Exhale the left hand on the right foot or maybe on the outside of the right foot. So this is a revolved uh, pyramid or triangle we call it. So reaching up. Working a lot the diagonals today, working uh, that idea that we will facilitate any twisting rotational movement in our uh, karate. If we habituate, if we cultivate the ease with the internal engagement, 
and release. So take a breath here, and I'm coming into a little balance, a baby balance called Warrior Three. All we're doing is finding the right leg as our support, and we're lifting the left foot. So square off the hips, point them towards the mat. As you flex through that foot, that foot might come up a little higher, or you could just keep it an inch or so from the mat, just as long as you keep the alignment and you're safe for what you need to do and your energy level and where you're at in terms of your uh, injuries or whatever's going on with your body. Good, so strong supporting right leg, the quads lift up towards your right hip as you wrap around and under your seat. Really nice, good. And then come center. Face the side of your uh, mat. We're gonna shift. So as we shift a little, this is very much like Shin Kyuk, with the feet about 45 degrees. As we shift, we can even go a little longer. If you're happy staying high, please stay high. If you'd like to challenge yourself by going low, sole of the foot on the mat and go low and shift. So working our flexion here, working our ability to move from side to side. One side's probably going to be quite different from the other side. So begin to notice that. Which side, I know some of us have, I know we've, all of us actually have had serious injuries that we've had to cope with, especially with the legs, the knees, and the hips. Good, so come back center. This is your, we call this goddess pose, but in some karate traditions, it is what they call the kibidach. The feet are 45. You reach up high, take a breath. Right arm underneath the left, eagle arm. So take a breath, look up, and then exhale, drop the tailbone. So I'm taking it low here. Just notice that instead of this, I'm doing this. So my tailbone is down, elbows away from chest, fingers up. So inhale up, we'll do it together. Exhale, come down, inhale. Working the quads here and also the AB adduction of the inner thighs. One more, inhale, reach it, exhale it down. Good, and then arms out wide to the side, go the other direction. So now that's the left under the right, fingers up, elbows away from the chest, take it down. So dropping the tailbone, try to be as strict as you can as you lift up and straighten up, exhale. So it tends to be to want to lean forward, so see if you can drop the tailbone, you'll work these a bit more. Good, one more, inhale, and exhale down. Good, from here, release the arms wide to the side, parallel the feet, big toes slightly in, hands to the waist, shoulders back and down. This is a yoga pose called Prasarita Padottanasana. So Prasarita, lengthening. As you fold it down, hang your head, except for the spine, also great for flexion, so planting hands between your feet, Go wider if that's for you, and if it's easy for you. Some of you going for inversions, you can lower the head to the mat and begin. Otherwise, allowing in your forward fold, you don't have to go up if you don't want to, so plant your hands, and then notice where your body weight is. If you're very far forward, if you're in your heels, are you pronating, supinating, pressing more in the insides of feet, or are you pressing more outward. Begin to notice your own patterns, your tendencies, and I'm sending my hands behind me through the legs, pointing the fingers away, and stretching again through the entire back body. So core it up, and forward fold it, bend your knees if you need to. Good, good. So the feet are parallel. We have kibidach in so many of our kata, including the techies including, I was just working on Chinte the other day and also Nijushiho. So when we are in Kibidash and in Shotokan, we definitely want this not to happen and it happens quite a bit. So in our Kibidash, what we're training in our Kata and certainly in the Tekis, the test is can we keep our iron horse stance while being able to rotate and do a lot of stuff on the upper body, but keeping this very, very strong. So as we know from the Tekis, as we know from, I don't know, what was I doing? I was doing, uh, so from this. So transitioning from your kibirach to other fridach, for example, positions, 
in your kata, the transition is important to distinguish not only the stances, but also to, uh, we're looking for the solidity in, not this, <laughs> but rather this. So pushing through the heels, feeling through the outer shins, strong through the inner thighs, it's sort of AB adduction, uh, outward feeling with the inner thighs, quad super strong. And again, tailbone down. So something to think about. Good, let's take the hands to the mat. We go to the other side now, as we find our downward facing dog. Let's step the left leg forward now. I'm gonna go this side so you can see it. Arms up. I tend to get lazy with this back knee, so I wanna push a little, lift the heel, but strong through the ball of that back foot. Open, this is warrior two. Settle and shoulders away from your ears. I don't do this, I want to remind myself, use the shoulder blades, use the, everything in the back body to allow that open, proud, noble, dignified uh, posture in the front body. Front knee, stacking over the front ankle, straighten the front leg, triangle here. So left arm forward, forward, hinging from here, hinging from the hips, press to the big toe mat of that front foot, exhale, find your triangle on this side. So as I reach up high, my gaze is high to my fingers or they could, the eyes could look parallel to the mat, so you choose. Finding expansion, think about the points to your star, feel, about, feel the back body open. And remember, we also like to use this imagery of a wall supporting both sides, left and right, lower back, upper back, middle back. So you feel this expansion. It's not just one part of the back getting supported, but you feel an openness through the back body. You could really almost lean back slightly. Good, good. Really nice. Exhale, right hand comes down. Now notice your hamstrings here. As you tap that back foot in, you might be able to go a bit longer if you feel more comfortable here. I happen to feel more open on this side compared to the other side. I'm rolling a left hip behind me so that it doesn't uh, go wonky. And my arms can be on the mat or you could reach for your elbows if you want a bit more of a lengthening through the back body. Take a breath, exhale, bowing down for pyramid pose. We call this Pajra Tonasana. Two more, inhale, fill. Exhale, ground and settle. One more, inhale, big breath. Press a little more into the big toe mound and then you'll start to feel the activation through the hamstring muscle. Good. Now, I'm gonna tap that back foot in just a touch. And remember, if you need this, you could always reach for a book or a block. I'm going for my revolved triangle now. So, right arm forward, exhale, right hand on the top of the left foot or maybe on a block to support you. Reach up high with this left arm. Normally the legs will be straight and you'll want to squeeze this left hip back and the inner thighs are, are almost scissoring towards the midline. So find your balance, cord it up, sending left arm high, rotating towards your left and exhale shaking is part of it so if you feel a little bit of a, a wobble here that's normal warrior three so as we find a warrior three arms can be wherever you want if you want more of a challenge the arms might be forward if you want more stability maybe hands at the chest you could play with airplane wings too so finding a version maybe you lift the leg a little higher try it out find your balance trust it and know that even if you have to hang on, for example, a chair to your left support you, the point is you want to get that square feeling with the hips. So a little bit more pressure on that supporting leg. That's it. Beautiful. Really nice. You've got it. Good, good. And down. Good. So let's come back to center. Reach up high. Exhale, fold it. Left hand in the center between your feet, which are about hip width distance. Bend your legs if you need to. And in fact, I'm gonna encourage left leg deep bend and reach up high with the right arm. 
So again, if you need to use blocks, you use blocks. You'll feel the opening through your right buttock, uh, medius, minimus, and gluteal, uh, gluteus maximus. You wanna feel that opening there and release. Let's go to the other side. So right hand down the center of your feet, slightly ahead of your feet. Bend deep, deeply into that right leg and reach up high with this left arm. Good, draw the core in and send that energy high through the left fingertips. Good, and release. One more each round, and this time, uh, each side rather, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So left hand on the center, between the feet, slightly ahead, bend the left leg, reach up high. Now point that uh, right thumb down and just wrap around the lower back, finding that left hip crease. Wrap, so use the right shoulder, use the right shoulder um, blade and through the right armpit, look up, or you could look to the side. And release, let's go to the other side. So if that's not happening and you're not touching the mat, you can always just hold one knee. So you can hang and do a varied version. You don't have to fall directly to the floor. So right hand down, uh, bending into that left leg, right leg, sorry, reach up high and then bind. So point that left thumb down and wrap around. That's even off through the hips if you can, a touch. But engagement through the rhomboids, through the scapula, using the back body here, pushing slightly into that right hand as you feel the power of the connection from the right heel of the hand to the right armpit. Exhale, let it go. Nice. So we're going to take a seat now. Your right leg in front of you. So you take the right leg in front. Nice. You hear your breath. Good. So knee is bent. We've done this one before. About a hand width distance between the foot and the thigh. From here, we sit up tall. Instead of binding today, I simply want to send the arms out wide in front. So as you send the arms wide, send them as wide as you can, and then toe heel the right foot a little more to the right. Doesn't matter how low you go with your forward fold. Take a breath, exhale. You'll feel the engagement through the belly button, but send the chest downwards and beyond your foot, the long, long leg. Good, two more, inhale, fill. And then exhale, lower, and I'll show you how the back is. The back is, instead of just dropping the head and see how I'm rounding, uh, what I want to do, even though, well, I have a super stiff back, but that is the idea, is as if I'm sending the energy right from here, from the sternum. So try that rather than the easy thing would be to just relax and just to flop. But see if you can actually uh, activate. That's it. So nice. Nice, nice. Good. Good from here. Let's press the sole of the foot into the inside of the thigh. And this is just a forward fold. So arms out in front. Exhale, maybe reach for the toes. You exhale to bow down. Same principle of sending energy from the heart space or the center of your chest beyond the toes, maybe five, even maybe 10 feet beyond that. As if you've got a laser or something being sent energetically from your core to a target ahead of you. That's it. And come up. So from here, we'll come to a figure four. Try it out. If that's not happening, you can always just do a forward fold. If you have problems with your knees and the bend is not happening, then try a modified version of this. But actually, I know, is it? Who's here? Some of you who've spoken to me about your injuries, you are doing something similar to this in your rehab or in your PT. So. The way to be uh, very strict about the integrity of the, especially the lateral part of your knee joint, is to flex through this foot. And again, don't worry about going super deep. This is really just a, a slight forward fold here. So keeping strict with the knee, don't let it lift up. See if you can be strong through the foot and you'll feel it through the hip and the seat. Arms forward, fold it and breathe. Good, good. 
So nice. Now, one last thing. I don't know whether um, the knee people are going to enjoy this one, but see if this is possible. So one knee down, see how uh, one knee down in front and the other knee is uh, tucked behind the other knee. I don't know, can you see that? So I'm tucking it behind. A version, maybe sitting on a cushion. Uh, a possible alternative would be a seated spinal twist like this. Or again, if it's not happening, just legs out in front and do a twist emanating from the core either side. So it depends on your knee position or situation rather. So when we come to this one, the arms again forward uh, and slightly to the side, push through piano hands, so fingers strong, forward fold it as you fold, you should feel it through the hips and through the seat. Good, and keep breathing. Nice, nice and come up. Nice. Let's go the other side. So, sitting up tall, we're going to try to get into pretty much every angle of the hip here through our yoga postures and we're going to do a, a little practice for our kicks from the floor after this. So pressing into the sole of the foot, especially as this tends to come out onto the edge of the foot. See if you can be a little strict here. Arms out in front, remember we were doing it this way. So we've done it with the bind before, uh, but this is just a variation to make it a little simpler and to uh, still get that nice engagement, consciousness at the lower belly, referencing the center, trusting the center and always making it your default. So as you, Breathe, lift and lengthen, exhale, bow. So to any degree, pressing on the inside of that foot. So that's your left foot and flexing through this long right leg in this case. Toes are lifted. Good, good. Nice. And slowly rise, that's it. So sole the foot now onto the inside of the thigh. This is a forward fold. So draw everything in and up. Exhale, looking for a connection to the toes or maybe you cross at the wrists, you can choose what feels good, but keep as evenly as even as you can between the big toe and the pinky toe side. So draw everything in up, exhale, and that's it. Send the energy down and beyond the foot. Good, you should feel it on the underside of the leg. Another big breath, exhale it. Good, slowly lift up and rise up. This is our chance to do a uh, figure four. If anyone is, uh, you're practicing this at home, and if you feel really ready, then the next thing would be to do a half lotus. So the heel would find the opposite hip crease. So you can try that at home whenever you're, you're feeling a little bit more open, or you, you could even try it now if you want to. So same idea, flex through the foot, knee away from the midline rather than lifting it. And I might just be here today, it doesn't matter how low you are. It's about the engagement. It's about your safety and it's about alignment. So let's go. Exhale it down. Good. And a big breath. Expanding. And then exhaling, bowing. Good. One more. Inhale. Lift it up. Good. Engagement at the lower belly. Lower it down. That's it. And release. Good. So we have this little... Set up, we call this Gomukhasana. It gets very deep into the hips. So we're tucking behind the left knee, the right knee. So the feet are gonna be equidistant. So look behind you, and I don't know whether you can see from here, but I look behind to see if they're level. If they're not level, that's okay too, because as I have a bad right hip, I know that a certain side is not going to be uh, symmetrical. So I might ease off. And I can always find the seated spinal twist if I prefer that. So please know you can adapt. Good, arms out and bow. So breathe into your seat. Start to notice one seat's probably more, in my case, I'm feeling it very much in the left. I exhale to bow and lengthen over the knees or the feet. Good, you can back off if you need to. Remember, you can always rearrange the legs if you notice this particular side is more uh, challenging, good, really nice. 
Good, let's sit up. Now we've done a lot of work on the hips and on the, uh, hopefully on the legs and feet. So I would, I'd like you to bend that left leg and see if you can practice this because we're going to build on what we did last week. So if you're able, you're going to bend that, the toes under and send the right leg behind you, it's bent. So it's just bent here. If you're unable to do this, then lower the foot and then you'll come into it and then come out of it. But I want you to get used to this idea because this is going to help you with your, uh, your preparation of kicks. So it looks like this, I'm gonna show you how this, uh, this is actually something I learned from Richard and something he learned in turn from Yohara Sensei. And it's a wonderful one for uh, building your flexibility on your mwashigiri and also on your thrust kicks. So I'll show you how it's done. Ideally, you do not uh, lower your hands to the mat. If you can, everything is away from the mat because you're just referencing the center. It looks like this. So I send the leg up and around. This is mwashigiri. Point the toe down and then lift it, bring it right back where it came from. Then we bring the knee up, so it's vertical. We push through, toe down, big toe down, bring it back and then lower. So any part of that you want to join in with me, uh, obviously join, but notice how I'm not leaning forward nor am I using my hands on the ground. If you need to, by all means do that to start with because that's how we build the strength. I'll count you. So we lift, itch, knee, we land the toe, big toe down, and then lift again, some, she, bring it up, knee up, go, rook, big toe down if you can, stitch, hatch. Good. Let's try it again. Do you, how do you go, Laura? Amazing. I, I'm liking the thumbs up. Yes. So you should feel it through the seat. Do you feel that, JT Sensei? Yeah? I hope so. Thumbs up? Trying any action, any portion of this, okay? So itch. Knee. Big toe down. Some lift. She back. Go vertical. Rook push. Big toe down. Sitch back to center, heart release. Good, nice. If you need to hang on, you do. You just lower the hands, right? But if you are able, you're going to feel like the lower belly sucks in and up. It's that Udena Bandha in the yoga terms, or it's the Sekitanden in karate terms, okay? So, hands down if you need it. Practice maybe once or twice without the hands on the mat. So, itch. Knee, sum, she, go, rook, sit. Try again. We're going to do two more rounds, okay? I'm, I'm just going to count you because then you won't skip uh, any portion of this. Because remember, we want that fluidity of the Mwashigiri. You want to, you see how do you feel that in your, you should feel it in your hips. You bring it back the way it came. You verticalize for the thrusting kick technique. You bring it back because always you bring it back to that, um, the, the source. So it's always the, uh, whether it's a Shirigiri, whether it's Kikomi, you want to use that big uh, Goryu Smacks. And then down. So let's do two more rounds together. Then we'll go the other side. So hands away from that if you can, otherwise on the, on the mat. So rounding, itch. Knee lift. Big toe, use, uh, use a big toe. So sum. She vertical. Go push. Big toe down, rook back to center, and harch behind you. Good, and if you're able, you're using this. So we're gonna another round on this side, okay? So around the washigiri. Itch. It's vertical in front of you, 12 o'clock. Knee back. Some vertical. She push, big toe down. Rook. Vertical 
and then back. Hutch, I lost the count here. <laughs> but yeah, that's the idea. Let's go to the other side. So tuck the toes under if you can, otherwise release the foot. You know you can always adapt and then you just get stronger and stronger through the core and it becomes really easy and you can do it without any assistance. But if you need to, you just use your blocks, use your support on the hands, whatever allows you without pain and obviously uh, not going against doctor's orders. You are uh, building the core, not just the secotundum, the transversus abdominis, but you're also working the deep back muscles and we want to solicit uh, biomechanics and understand the biomechanics so we don't go to shoulders or we don't go to the extremities. So let's use what we can. So round, itch, big toe down, knee lift, take it around, sum, she, vertical, go push, big toe down, rook back and return. Keep breathing. Itch. Knee lift. Sum. Bring it back. She vertical. Go push, big toe down. Bring it back to center. Rook. And back. Sitch. Nice, nice. Keep breathing. Round again. Itch. Lift up knee. Take it back, sum, lift up vertical, she, push through the heel, big toe down, go, back to center, rook, and sit behind you. Let's do two more. So any part of this that you can do, remember you can always lean, you can always support yourself. So, itch, bring it round. Knee lift. Take it back where it came from. Sum. Bring it back vertical. She. Push through the heel. Go. Big toe down. And then bring it back to center. Rook. And return. Sitch. One more. Itch. Tap with the big toe. Lift up through the heel. And back where you came from. Sum. She. Vertical. Push through the heel, go, bring it back, vertical, rook, and return, sit. So nice, guys. From here, soles the feet together. So we're going for more of a diamond shape in your uh, butterfly stretch. Interlace the hands and find the toes. Make a little nest and just flap, flap a little bit. Flap, flap. You can make circles forward and back, relaxing the lower back from the previous exercise. Relax the shoulders and the neck, shaking it out. Good. And from here, I release the hands. I'm going to tuck them underneath the shins and I make another little clasp around the toes here. Now, from the side, it looks like this. I'm not super flexible through the knees or the, through the hips. But I just, you know, I'm just one of those people who works at it and hopes to find some incremental change with time. So I'm sending the chest forward. You notice how this is not a rounding, but as I send the, uh, the chest forward, I flatten out so that the knees lower touch. Now, any version like this, if, it, if this is not happening, you can always come to a wide leg forward fold and do a forward fold this way and over your legs if bending at the knees is not happening for you today. So you, you know your own body and you know what your body needs. You know your weaker points. So please, uh, you start to develop your own little workout routine, taking from the teachers you like and what really landed on you. So please take from today what, what helped you and what you feel can uh, assist and enhance your training. So let's send the legs out in front. Last little bit, so legs up, so boat pose here, legs straight if you can, bend them, deep, deep abdominal muscles, shoulders back and down, lower down, Ardha Navasana, this is a canoe shape, so squeeze the seat, inner thighs engage and then come up, 
See if you can really use those deep, deep abdominal muscles. Good. And any version, you can hang onto the knees, you could lower the feet in any time if you need a break. So we're gonna do another one. So take it down, squeeze long legs. I'm looking up towards my toes and then I come back into my boat pose, hanging onto my knees if I need to. That's it, one more. As you go down, squeeze. So lower, lower belly is engaged. And pressing the lower back also against the mat here. It takes some practice to know how to do, uh, to feel that because often we'll just keep the hollow, hollow. So as we lift up, nice and smooth, you've got it. We'll go for a tiny balance. So push through the heels here. Maybe you straighten out. You can always keep the legs bent. They don't have to be super straight. Finding a balance here as long as you can. Good, that's it. Nice and release. Let's go ahead and find a reclined, a supine position. That is, you're lying on your back. And let everything be heavy for a moment or two. You worked really hard. I'm gonna sit up just to watch and check on you. Anything you need here, whether it's a, a bridge or a wheel or a happy baby, it might just simply be a supine twist looking left and right, whatever it is you do need on your back. Good. That's it. Relaxing your face, if you're, even if you're seated or if you're lying down, just relax your shoulders and neck. That's it. And when you're ready, you'll roll. If you're lying down, you'll roll to one side and you'll bring the knees towards your chest. So we're in a little field position. That's it. And then sitting up whenever you're ready, we'll begin to find uh, your normal breathing. That's a, a little bit of your normal breathing plus your ujjayi or your oceanic breathing. And we'll close out with three big breaths through an open mouth here. So inhale, long spine, fill up. Exhale, sigh and soften, relaxing your jaw. Good, two more. Inhale, fill, feel it opening through the chest and the back body. Exhale, sigh out through your mouth. Good, one more. Inhale, nice big breath, expand. Look for that spaciousness and lift. And then you sigh and soften as you exhale, empty. Good, amazing everyone. Thank you for joining today. And hopefully, as I said, you can take aspects of today that work for you and then integrate it, incorporate it into your daily practice, even when we don't meet. Also everyone, fantastic work, great job. Let me know if you have any questions and hope to see you in different classes during the week or and the weekend. <laughs> Bye, great job. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new to my channel, please be sure to click subscribe so you'll never miss new uploads. Keep practicing everyone and see you in the next video.